Welcome to Mars Music Showcase. I'm Briar Cisneros and welcome back to another video. And it's been roughly a year since I did this and that is going through my entire collection and just showcasing what I have. So 954 CDs. I don't know how many CDs I had last year, but currently as of this recording, I have 954 CDs. So I am almost at a thousand. So most definitely by the end of the year, I'll be at a, I'll make that milestone. So anyhow, so basically I really wanted to do this again because of course, since that last series, I have gained a lot more subscribers. Again, I want to thank all of you for supporting the channel. And this is kind of for those people who are new and are kind of curious to see what I do have. So I'm going to do this in individual parts because that'd be, that'd be way too long. Uh, so for right now, for part one, I'm just going to go from this top shelf. So it starts with A and then kind of stops like somewhere mid ha during halfway through the C's. It kind of gets cut off, but I'll let you know when we get to the end. All right, so I'm not gonna give too much background info because again, I don't want this to be too long. I'll only give like background info if it's warranted. So that's pretty much how it's gonna go. So hopefully you're gonna look forward to this. Um, so yeah, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you are new. And without further ado, let's just jump into it. So of course we're gonna start all the way over here with just A's. So the first one I'm gonna show we have ABBA with ABBA Gold, which is the greatest hits. Pretty sure most people own this for the most part. It has pretty much all the ABBA you want. And yet, yeah, I really need to get the studio albums. I don't know why I've been putting it off for so long, but one day I'm gonna start getting ABBA albums on CD. Okay, next we have Paul Abdul. This is Spellbound, pretty solid album not one i go back to often but it's it's all right okay let me just get all these out because all of these are by the same band okay next up we have some acdc so i don't have every acdc al album but i have some of the big ones so we have high voltage the first international album let there be rock Highway to Hell, the last one with Bon Scott, and here's the first one with Brian Johnson with Back in Black. Then we have Flick of the Switch, pretty underrated in my opinion. The Razor's Edge, and their, well, their latest album back in 2020, 2021, 2020, 2020. I forget when this came out, but we have Power Up. Yep, I'm a big ACDC fan. I know there are people who aren't much fans of them, but I like them. Okay, next up we have some Accepts, German metal band. We have Restless and Wild, fantastic. Then we have Balls to the Wall, pretty suggestive cover, but you know, pretty good album too. Then I picked this up recently. We have Blood of the Nations. All right, and then we have Ace of Base, The Sign. I don't like it, <laughs> but I still own it. Why the hell not? Then I have this Greatest Hits, Brian Adams with, yeah, it's just the Greatest Hits of Brian Adams. And by the way, if you haven't realized already, this is alphabetized by last name, which is why you see Brian Adams now. Then I have two from Adele. These were originally my mom's, but I raided her CD collection and I picked up these two. We have 21, and then we have 25. Yep, I used to not care for Adele, but over the years I've kind of softened on her because she has made some fantastic songs. Okay, we have quite a bit from this band. Let's see if I can just pick them all up. It doesn't fall but next we have Aerosmith so I have a pretty good amount of their catalog 
I am going to see if I can try to get all their albums, but I'm not in a rush, honestly, uh, for obvious reasons. So first up, we have the debut. Pretty solid. Obviously, they're still trying to find their sound. Then we have the second album, Get Your Wings. And then we have the two big name, big ones here. We have Toys in the Attic. And then we have Rocks. Probably my favorite. Okay, then we have Draw the Line. Pre, another pretty underrated album in their catalog, in my opinion. We have Night in the Ruts. Then they have two from their 80s period, which I have established I am not the hugest fan of this period, but there's some songs I do like. So we have Permanent Vacation, has Dude Looks Like a Lady, great song. Then I have Pump, pretty solid album, not bad. All right. Next, we have Aha, Hunting High and Low. Of course, it has the big hit Take On Me on it. And even the other songs out here are pretty good as well. The Sun Always Shines on TV, uh, the title track, The Blue Sky. Yeah, some good synth pop. All right, this is my only album from this band. We have the Alan Parson Project. Alan Parsons Project. Don't forget the S. Another good album. See if I get more of, the, of them. Next, we have Alcatraz. No parole for rock and roll. This is Graham Bonnet's band. He formed, and this one has Ingve Malmsteen, which is who is pr a pretty well-regarded guitar player. So, awesome album. I mean, Graham Bonnet, great vocalist. All right, and uh, I only have two from this band. We have. Two from the Almond Brothers band, Great Southern Rock. Uh, we have, of course, we have At Fillmore East, the live album, of course, gotta have it. And this is a deluxe edition, which has more of the, tr of the set. Then, and then I have Eat a Peach, which is the, f this, was rec this was released after Dwayne Almond's passing. He is on this album, but only in like recordings and stuff like that. Sad tale. Okay, next we have a one-off album. We have Anderson, Bruf, and Wakeman Howe. I, hope, I think I said that re weirdly. Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman Howe. Okay, there you go. So it basically has some of the members of Yes forming a separate project outside of Yes. Because I believe at this point they weren't, none of them were in the band. So they decided to make this album. And yeah, this is a very good one. Very, very solid album. Then we have Asia. A lot of prog, prog musicians on this one. Of course, you have John Wetton from King Crimson, Uriah Heep, Steve Howe, Carl Palmer, Jeff Downs. Yeah, some great stuff. There are people who don't like th this band, but I like them. All right, we have Rick Astley. Whenever you need somebody, of course, has never going to give you up on it. And then we have two from this band. This is kind of like an R&B group. Uh, this is Atlantic Star. Here is On the Name of Love. And then you have We're Moving Up. They're okay. They're not, they're not like groundbreaking or anything. Just, it's fine. Baby Metal. Pretty controversial band because you know this is both a mixture of J-pop and metal. They call it kawaii metal, <laughs> uh, but it's not for everybody. I kind of have a soft spot for it. We got one Backstreet Boys album. We have Millennium, which has the big hits "I Want It That Way." I like that song. Now I have this Bad Company Graces. Now I do have more Bad Company than this, but it's kind of separated from the collection. I'll explain why when we get there. So, but yeah, I do have more, but in this in this episode, I'm only gonna show the greatest hits. So don't worry. 
All right, so we have two from Anita Baker, another R&B singer. We have Rapture, which is a fan fantastic album. Then we have Rhythm of Love, which is not as fantastic. It's a bit bland. Now we are, I probably should have mentioned this, but we're in the Bs already. I, yeah, I don't have that many A's. Okay, next we have three from the band. Of course, we have music from Big Pink. This is a remix, I believe, or remaster. Then we have probably my favorite band album, which is the self-titled or the Brown album. Then we have the third album, which is called Stage Fright. Another great album. Yeah, I'm pretty much I pretty I pretty much I pretty much love this band basically. I need to like, buy, I need to buy more, honestly. But those three are fantastic. Then we have a greatest hits. We have one from the Bangles. Pretty big in the 80s. A lot of good stuff. Okay, and again, same as what I said with the band, I do own more Beach Boys, but again, they're kind of separated. So hang tight. I'll get some more Beach Boys later. But for right now, I'm just gonna show these two off. So I have this kind of two and two for one collection. So this out this particular issue has two albums so it has carl and the passions and then it has holland and they're all on separate disc so here's disc one and then there's disc two and it also comes with the deep with the ep that came with holland as well that's a little bonus so that's kind of cool uh so these are kind of handy i i i do want to try and find them separated but they're pretty hard to get for some reason, so these gonna have to work for now, but it's fine. And of course we have the best Beach Boys album of all time, and that is Summer in Paradise, of course. I mean, you can't get more classic than this, can ya? Uh-huh. Okay, now of course we gotta show the Beatles, of course. I mean, I mean, what collection is not does not have the Beatles in them? Unless you're a Beatles hater, then what's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, let's see, let's try this. So I don't have the debut, I don't have Please Please Me yet, but I do have With the Beatles. Okay, let me just put these back as I go so that they don't fall. Then we have A Hard Day's Night. We have Help, I don't have Beatles for sale. Careful, hit the cord there. Hopefully that doesn't affect anything. Uh, rubber Soul. Revolver, this is the uh, remaster, or the remix from Giles Martin. Then I have Sgt. Pepper's Living Hearts Club Band. Pretty well-known album, I think. Then we have Magical Mystery Tour. I don't have Yellow Submarine. Then here is the another remix uh, from the for the White Album. Then we have Abbey Road, of course, my favorites. We have Let It Be. We have Let It Be Naked, and then we have the One compilation. Okay, we have two from the great guitarist Jeff Beck. We have Blow by Blow, fantastic album. Then we have There and Back. Then we have some Bee Gees. Here is, what's this one called again? Uh, Spirits Having Flown. Then we have this Greatest Hits compilation, two CDs. Very nice. We have two from Pat Benatar. We have Live from Earth. And then we have, I think this is her debut, Crimes of Passion. This is supposed to come first, by the way. Okay, we have Cheap Thrills by Big Brother and the Holding Company, where Janis Joplin got her start. There she is there. Now we have some jazz. 
We have Bill Evans Trio with Waltz for Debbie. Great jazz album. This is a live album, by the way, and some great piano playing and bass playing on it. Fantastic. Then we have some Black Sabbath. So finally, let's get some metal. Well, actually, I showed the except one earlier. So let's get to the OGs of metal. We have the debut. Love that cover, by the way. Then we have Paranoid. Master of Reality. Volume 4. This one took me a bit to get to appreciate the whole album, but love it as well. Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, my favorite Black Sabbath album. I mean, you have like the title track, Nas National Acrobats, uh, Killing Yourself to Live, uh, Sp Spiral Architect, just so many great songs on it. Sabotage. And then kind of jumping around, I have the, f the first one with Ronnie James Dio in the band. We have Heaven and Hell. Great album. I do like a lot of the albums, post the post Ozzy stuff. I really enjoy a lot of those albums. And here's another one I'm, I pretty much enjoy. I know some people aren't big into it, but we have Born Again, which is the only one to feature Ian Gillen on vocals. Of course, Ian Gillen from Deep Purple. Then I only have one from the Tony Martin album, but Tony Martin era, but this is a great one. I very much enjoy this one. We have Headless Cross. And it features Brian May. He provides guitar solo in When Death Calls, which is pretty cool. Okay, Blind Faith. Uh, I probably should censor that, but yes. So Blind Faith, super group. You have Eric Clapton, Steve Winwood, Ginger Baker and Rick Gretsch. Uh, of course, this has the original cover on it, which I can't show because I don't want this channel to be taken down, mainly because of the circumstances of this cover. You probably saw a little bit of there, but hopefully, hopefully it wasn't that visible. Um, but anyhow, moving on, we have Wise Blood with, this is her third album, I think, uh, from R Front Row Seat to Earth. And I do own more of her, but she, uh, some of her albums are separated. So for right now, I'm just going to show this. But this is a solid album, but she does better than this, in my opinion. Okay, Blue Cheer, Vinspis Eruptum. And some people have credited them as the pro, as proto-metal. They definitely have a heavy sound. Uh, so very interesting, a little bit of history there. Now, here's another band I have quite a bit from. We have Blue Oyster Cult. So I very much enjoy this band. So many great stuff. So we're gonna start with the debut. Of course, great start. Then a great follow-up with Tyranny and Mutation. Then I think this is my favorite Blue Oyster Cult album right now. We have Secret Treaties. Then I have this live album, On Your Feet and On Your, or on your Knees which pretty much has a lot, a lot of the early stuff. Then we have Ancients of Fortune, which has, of course, Don't Fear the Reaper on it. Then we have probably my second favorite Blue Oyster Cult album. We have Spectres. Then we have another live album. We have Some Enchanted Evening. We have mirrors. Cultosaurus erectus. Pretty wild cover. Then my last one, I have Fire of Unknown Origins with, with Burning Fee on it. That's, this Blue Ice Cult is another band I hope to get all the, all the albums at one point. All right, next, I have one from uh, Michael Bolton. We have Soul Provider. I like I like Michael Bolton. I don't like everything, but he has some good songs. And he, he's a good singer. And my only Bon Jovi album, we have Slippery When Wet. I mean, I just got it for the hits, basically. Eh, I didn't care much for the deep cuts. 
Then we have two from Boston. We have the self-titled debut. I mean, come on, you gotta have it too if you're a rock fan. And then I have the follow-up album, Don't Look Back. Another solid album. Then here is some David Bowie now. So another one I... I'm gonna see if I can get all of his albums. He has a lot, so obviously I'm gonna take my time. But yeah, he's he's a great he's great. I, I do love David Bowie. Um, this is probably my favorite, Hunky Dory. And then next up is probably my second favorite. We have, of course, Ziggy Stardust, Inspires from Mars. Aladdin Sane. low this is when he's this is when this is during his Berlin period then we have station to station then we have heroes with the iconic title track scary monsters and super creeps Let's Dance, again, with the iconic title track. And then, skipping a ton, and then we have probably one of the oldest CDs I have in my collection, because I bought this not long after it came out, and that was kind of the start of my collection. We have Black Star. Yep, great album, great album to go out on. And then I have this compilation, Nothing Has Changed. All right, so moving on from David Bowie, let's go to some Jackson Brown. Here we have his debut. Then we have his second album, For Every Man. Great stuff, great singer-songwriter. We'll see if we get more down the line. All right, next we have three from Budgie. We have the self-titled debut. We have Bandolier. Actually, I can't remember which one came first now. Uh, I want to... I can't remember which one came first now. Well, I have to fix that, but... Uh, in for the kill. Then we have Bandolier. Again, another very underrated hard rock band from the 70s. Um, again, they're power trio. And again, they kind of get a lot of flack because... They, and especially the lead singer who looks uncannily, inc uncanny like Getty Lee almost. If you, if hopefully you can see that, but the guy in the middle with the glasses. And he plays bass too. But of course, he does not sound like Getty Lee. He has his own unique voice. So yeah. And now we get to one of my favorite artists ever. I mean, this is. I mean, I've spoken so much about this person. Like, I just love her to death. We have Kate Bush. Of course, I have all her albums, of course. But yeah, I love Kate Bush. She's one of those artists where if you make fun of her, I make fun of you. So anyhow, so here is her debut, The Kick Inside, with the U.S. cover, which is terrible because it does not represent her at all. But I digress. Then we have her second album, Lionheart. I did a ranking video on her album, by the way, so go check that out. You, pr you can just search it. Then I have this bootleg, I guess. This is called The Tour of Life, which is her, which is one, records one of the shows uh, from her t last tour back in the set, back in 1979. Pretty interesting. Of course, the sound quality is not that good, but for a bootleg, that's kind of be expected. Okay, now we have her third album, Never Forever. The Dreaming, her most batshit insane album, but I love it because of it. Then my, we have probably my favorite Kate Bush album. We have Hounds of Love, just a masterpiece, a perfect album in my opinion. Then we have the follow up with, Sensu with The Sensual World, solid album. Then we have uh, 
the red shoes. Then she takes that long break, and then in 2005, she releases Ariel. Solid album. Then her last album, we have 50 Words for Snow. Another solid album. Hopefully she releases at least one more album, but you know, it's her decision, her choice. And then the last Kate Bush album I have is this compilation with the whole story. Most people have this one. I'm not a fan of this one because the it's like very quiet in this particular CD copy. Like I can barely hear it. You really have to turn the thing up just to hear anything. I don't know if that's just my copy or is that just a whole a, a whole thing. Anyhow, so let's move on to Kate Bush. We're almost done with the bees, by the way. We have just one more to go get through, and that is the Birds, classic '60s folk rock band. I, I have the first five albums on CD, and this is a perfect time to plug in. So I'm doing a series with my good friend Nick Yermitsky. Uh, on his channel, we're going through all the Bur Birds albums. So. As of this recording, we're going to be, we're going to, probably this weekend, we're going to record the Notorious Bird Brothers. So I'll leave a link to a playlist of all the episodes we've done, so you can go and check those out, especially if you're a Birds fan. So first up, of course, we have Mr. Tambourine Man. Turn, turn, turn. Fifth Dimension. Younger Than Yesterday. And then we have the Notorious Bird Brothers. All right, and then we're entering the seas. And at this point, it's at a certain point, my, it's gonna get cut off. But again, I'll let you know when we get to the end. So keep, let's keep going. So I have three from this band. We have a nice, good progressive rock band. We have Camel. We have Mirage. Then we have The Snow Goose, which is an all instrumental album. Um, they originally wanted to have vocals on it, but this was based on a novella, if I'm not mistaken. And sadly, they couldn't get the rights to it. So they kind of had to just uh, release an instrumental album, which is still very good. Then we have Moon Madness. Probably my favorite one, by the way. All right, and then we have my only, well, my only album from this particular band. Um, we have some death metal. Yeah, I'm, 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 I haven't, I haven't looked back on it, but at some point I need to get into more death metal because I do enjoy. It. I do enjoy it to an extent, but I need to kind of, again, I need to build that ear for it. But I've liked what I've heard. So first up, we have probably the biggest death metal band of all time. We have Cannibal Corpse, and this one's called uh, Butchered at Birth. And if you're squeamish, uh, look away. So yeah, that's the album cover. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. They're a pretty wild band. Uh, but I've heard most people say this is not one of their better albums, so at some point I probably need to listen I probably need to get more of them so if you're a Cannibal Corpse fan let me know what's their best album all right we're done with the death metal for now uh, so let's keep going we have some more progressive rock this is more of the Canterbury scene we have two from Caravan so we have in the land of the gray of gray and pink then we have when girls turn plump when Wait, hold on. When for for girls who grow plump in the night. Great stuff. Then my only Mariah Carey album we have Daydream, which is probably her most commercially successful album. Yeah, I like Mariah Carey. Okay, I have Here's two from this singer, and I do own another one of her albums, but again, that's separated. We have Belinda Carlisle, of course, originally from the Go-Go's. I have a couple from her, from her solo stuff. This is Runaway Horses. And then we have Live Your Life, Be Free. 
don't have much I don't have much to say on those two honestly then we have some carpenters love the carpenters I mean Karen Carpenter what a voice then we had this one's a posthumous album this one's called love 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 lines love lines then we have this compilation two CD pack yeah, I love the Carpenters. They have, I just, again, like I just said, like Karen Carpenters, what a voice. Love her voice to death. Okay, then F, here's some, uh, let me rephrase that. Uh, here's a couple from the Cars. Of course, I had the debut. I mean, you gotta. Classic album. And then we have Candio. And I have this Greatest Hits. And there's one more Cars album, but say it with me now, it's separated from the collection. Anyhow, yeah, moving on. Okay, so next, some more jazz fusion. We have Mint Jams and the band called Kashiope. And this is a live album, but if you hear this one, then you're gonna be surprised because it pretty it doesn't sound like a live album at all. It pretty much sounds like a, a standard studio album but they cut out all the audience noise um, aside from maybe a couple tracks but for the most part if you weren't paying attention you would think this is a, a studio album but it's not it's all live and the playing here is just fantastic uh, so yeah if you have not heard of this album go check it out this is amazing stuff all right next up we have two from this artist we have some Tracy Chapman. So we have her debut, of course, which, which was huge in the back then. I think it won a lot of Grammys. And then I have her follow up with Crossroads. I probably need to give these two another listen because I don't know. I don't know because I maybe I I feel like I I haven't fully appreciated her yet, but I do hope to re-listen to those. Okay, so this is my only Ray Charles album. This was this one's called Genius Loves Company, which where he did a ton of collaborations on this one, and I believe this is the last one he released in his lifetime. So you have many guests on here. You have Nora Jones, James Taylor, uh, Elton John, Natalie Cole, Michael McDonald, Willie Nelson, BB King, Gladys Knight, uh, Johnny Mathis, and Van Morrison. So yeah, a ton. And here's a few from Cheap Trick. We have the, the, the debut. Heaven Tonight. Dream Police. Lap of Luxury. And then this crappy Greatest Hits compilation. If you see this particular brand, stay away, because these suck. All right, more positive. Here's a couple from Chicago. And then we have, we have the debut back when they were called Chicago Transit Authority, but they had to change it to just Chicago. And I have the second album, but it's separated from the collection. So now we have this Greatest Hits compilation. I mean, two CD pack. Disc one pretty much has most of the early stuff. And then disc two has a lot of the 80s onward, which is kind of cool. I like how they handled that. Okay, now here's a very underrated album. Like, I didn't know what to expect from this album, but when I first heard it, I was immediately hooked to it. So the band's called China Crisis, and this one's called Flaunt the Imperfection. Great album. Like good, like new wave, synth pop, little sprinkle of jazz. It's not a jazz album, but it has definitely little, little sprinkles of it, which sounds fantastic. So many catchy songs to it, and produced by Walter Becker of Steely Dan. And he provides a little bit of guitar. So great album. Go check this one out if you have not. Okay, next, Cinderella, my only one. I think this is the debut, Night Songs. Good old bluesy hair metal. 
Then we have two from Eric Clapton. We have Slow Hand. Great album. And then we have, of course, The Unplugged from MTV. Disc 1 has the original album. Disc 2 has a lot of outtakes and alternates. And then Disc 3 is the a DVD of the performance itself. Okay, then we have Gene Clark, of course, from The Birds, formerly. And this is a solo album, no other. Another fantastic underrated album. Go check it out if you haven't already. Then we have two from The Clash. We have London Calling. Then we have Combat Rock. Then we have Joe Cocker. Here's two. We have, of course, his debut with a little help from my friends with the title track, his rendition of the Beatles song. And then you have this Grey's Hits. And we have some Natalie Cole. Actually, no. Before we get to Natalie Cole, here is Coldplay A Rush of Blood to the Head, my only Coldplay album. Then we have Natalie Cole. This one is. Um, unforgettable with love. Then we have still unfor unforgettable. All right, and then we have three more to go, and then we'll close out this episode for today. So I'm just going to showcase the first three Phil Collins albums, and I do have more, but we'll get to that in episode two. So first step, Phil Collins. Face value, and this is the 2016 uh, remaster. And I know I know a lot of people are kind of are not a fan of this of Phil Collins redoing the covers, but I don't know. I kind I don't I don't mind it. I don't care but really. Uh, but yeah, as long as as long as the music's good, and it is. <laughs> so yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't care. But I do have uh, a, a vinyl copy with the original cover, so. I'm fine. Okay, next. Uh, hello, I must be going. And to close out, probably my second favorite Phil Collins solo album. And then, and of course, we have No Jacket Required. And I do own a vinyl copy of this as well. So, there you have it. So that is episode one of my CD collection series of my 2023 edition. So in the comments below, please let me know of all these albums here, which one was your favorite? And don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you in the next video. And it will kind of be kind of, it's not like I'm gonna do this like back to back. This will kind of be like every, I don't know, like every couple of videos, like probably the next video will be something different. And then the video after that will be episode two. So that's pretty much what I think in my head, but we'll see how it goes. So again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this again, like subscribe, you know, the drill. <laughs> thank you. And uh, goodbye for now.